हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल सुशांत चसवाइज टुडे वी आर एट द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ टू प्रिपेयर ओपनिंग्स व्हाट आर द थिंग्स वी कैन डू टू गेट और जनरेट इनिशिएटिव राइट फ्रॉम द ओपनिंग सो वन ऑफ माय सजेशन इज टू डेफिनेटली ट्राई एंड प्ले सम गैम्बिट्स सम एक्साइटिंग वन्स सी देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ गैम्बिट वन पीपल से दे आर साउंड एंड अदर अनसाउंड इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू no which are sound and which are unsound gambits generally what i suggest is in any gambit if we are getting around 1 and 1/2 to 2 developments for a pawn it should be a decent compensation let's start with an example here e4 d5 e takes d5 one of the most natural moves there are many other moves also and black instead of playing queen d5 goes with the move nf6 see what does a gambiter do he forces or tries to lure the opponent into making extra pawn moves or make him opponent make the opponent move the same piece again and again so here black knight on f6 attacks d5 black wants white to protect this pawn permanently let's say with the move c4 this is the only way to protect the pawn permanently and in doing so what happens a pawn is moved which is not a center pawn and it also obstructs the f1 bishop now what black will do he will try to break down this pawn and as a process he will gain some extra tempi so basically he will surrender the pawn permanently black can do so with the move c6 or e6 c6 d6 and c6 is also very good for black but do note that to c6 white may not take he may play the move d4 black goes e6 so called the icelandic gambit of the scandinavian defense e4 d5 d and f6 is scandinavian defense and with this move e6 it becomes icelandic gambit d takes e6 bishop takes e6 only way to keep the pawn and white thinks that he is doing well because now he will get the move d4 so only thing that compensates for or against the development is better center control if white never plays d4 black will go and c6 b5 and perhaps q d7 long castle all the black pieces will be free and white pawn on d2 or d3 will remain backward and passive so white goes d4 here right after the opening we can see black is trying to snatch the initiative means he will be ahead in development he will try to force matters the side who is able to force things is said to have the initiative that is initiative the ability to force things here of course black cannot go mc6 because of the move d5 So black plays d b four check, and now he has two simple ideas in mind. One, ability to castle, and second, after the move n c three, either he can use this move q e seven using the queen's control on the open file along with the white king, and threat becomes bishop c four, and also it looks like the bishop is protected, although bishop doesn't require protection because queen a four can be met by n c six. mainly now two things happen one d5 is met by b d5 check and second any move like b2 is met by bishop c4 when after queen a4 check and c6 black is absolutely fine in fact he is much better also we must note that here the move any4 is very good after which black will be able to castle as well the game we are discussing in this fight went bishop d2 white very well wants to trade pieces Q D four is not possible because the before bishop hangs, and with exchange of pieces, the initiative will dry down. Means the pawn will begin to matter more. So black goes queen e seven. This was his idea. Bishop gets supported. Mainly now the threat of bishop c four check is there. White is looking to develop quickly. After the move queen e four check, knight c six. We see d five is lost. There will be b d five. And after b b four, q b four, q b four, n b four, many would say black has exchanged the queens. Where is the attack? But see, three developments for a pawn is already much more. And we can see white black is about to the castle now and get the h rook to e eight. See the white rooks. In fact, all pieces are still standard. So this position should be absolutely good. Maybe almost winning for black. we will have a very similar position in the game white went to bb4 to which qb4 check qd2 white intends to trade the queens and dilute or liquidate the position where his pawn should 
be useful. Black goes in c6, looks like a blunder at first because there is the move d5. White plays d5. Again, as I said, qb4 and b4 was very bad. In this line, I have had many games and against players of various levels. From 2200 to 2400, I have always managed to get a very comfortable position. Around the range of Grandmaster, it becomes little difficult. But that will happen not just because of the opening, maybe overall because of the playing standard. So now what happens here is, Black who is ahead in development shouldn't worry about the fork. Rarely there will be a tactic possible with three extra developments. Black simply finds the move castle and see the d pawn is pinned. Black simply wants to move the bishop and go rh8. Position is about to collapse. White played qb4 and b4. And here the move na3 is necessary. I will be covering that game in detail in the next lesson maybe. As I said, I have had many games in this line. I will try to cover different lines in different lessons. Here white took d takes e6. What is the point? See, seemingly is giving the rook with nc2 check, but he thought that after d6, nc2, ke2, na1, he will go knight a3. So let's see. Knight c2, ke2, knight a1, and he wanted to play na3 and trap this knight. Even that is very bad because even after that, black's both rooks will get connected, and we will see that white's pieces are still struggling. But here black played the very strong RHE8 directly. See the rook is not running away and the threat is rook e6 check. So there is much more damage that can be caused. White played f3 to which rook e6 check kf2 knight takes a1. So this was not a detailed coverage but just to show you how to use gambits and snatch the initiative early in the opening. I hope you will find the concept of this lesson useful. Do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for your time.